Hello there everybody and thanks for tuning in again for another video here on Armor of God. This time I'll be sharing about this one interesting thing about Padre Pio and that how he was able to speak with angels, having conversation with the angels. He could speak to them, hear them, and see them. Padre Pio once said do not forget this invisible companion. He's always present, always ready to listen, and even more ready to console us. Always keep him present in our mind's eyes. Often remember the presence of our guardian angels and thank them. Pray to our guardian angels. Open ourselves up to our guardian angels and confide our sufferings. Have a constant fear of offending our guardian angel's pure gaze, that is the pure gaze of the angel. Turn to our guardian angels in times of anxiety and we will experience beneficial help. Never say we are alone. Never say we have nobody to whom we can open up and confide to. So here are some stories shared by the people who knew Padre Pio and his interaction with the guardian angels. And the first story is a spiritual son of Padre Pio from England. His name was Cecil Humphrey Smith. Now Cecil Humphrey was in a car accident and it was a pretty serious accident where he later ended up in the hospital. And one of Cecil Humphrey's friends decided he was going to send a telegram. That was before the time of emails and even telephones. And he was sending a telegram to Padre Pio to let him know about the accident, to ask him for prayers. This friend went down to the telegraph office and before he could even hand in his telegram for his message to be sent, the clerk at the desk handed a letter from Padre Pio to this person in which Padre Pio was promising his prayers for Cecil Humphreys. So how did he know that the accident had happened? No one had told him. Anyway, the story goes that when Cecil Humphrey recovered, he went to San Giovanni Rotundo and he actually asked Padre Pio about this. And Padre Pio responded, Well, do you think the angels travel as slowly as planes? So that was his answer. And this shows us that the guardian angels actually told Padre Pio what had happened. There were some other incidents that happened around Padre Pio. Several friars in the monastery in San Giovanni thought they had encountered Padre Pio's guardian angel. Don Giorgio was meant to serve mass with Padre Pio, but he fell fast asleep and he was in his room in town, so he wasn't even near the monastery. And in the midst of his sleep, he said he felt four fingers on his shoulder, and he heard someone saying, Come, you have to assist. He woke up and he looked around the room, and there was no one there. So it was his guardian angel who'd woken him. In the mid-1960s, this was when Padre Pio was getting old and feeble. Padre Alessio was assigned to assist Padre Pio, and his job was to help him to get to Mass or to the confessional and then to come back later and help him to continue. But it seems that Padre Alessio could not keep up with Padre Pio, and he recalls he did not get much sleep. So he would take Padre Pio to the confessional box, and then he'd go and he'd catch up on sleep, a little rest somewhere. And sometimes, perhaps quite often, he overslept. But he always would hear someone knocking or calling in the midst of his sleep, in the deep of sleep. And he would go downstairs, and sure enough, Padre Pio would be finishing Mass. And then one day, he missed his appointment with Padre Pio. And Padre Pio pointed his finger at him and said to him, Do you think I will continue to send my guardian angel to assist you to wake up every morning? So Padre Alessio was aware that he had been woken up, and this confirmed that it was Padre Pio's guardian angel who was doing this. He was giving his guardian angel little missions, little chores to do, which is quite nice to hear. And here's another story, and this one is also truly incredible. It's unbelievable, the story. There's a car dealer in Florence by the name of Pier Giorgio Biovanti, and he was one of Padre Pio's spiritual children. And he was traveling to San Giovanni from Florence. As he got tired from traveling, at sunset, he stopped his car for a little arrest. He got out and he went and bought coffee. After that he got back into his car and he put his hands on the steering wheel. He had no recollection of the rest of the journey. Absolutely nothing. Anyway, they pull in into the square in front of the monastery three hours later. And Giorgio, 
he felt someone shook him on the shoulders and said, Come on now, take over. So this was three hours later. There were three hours of missing time, and right in front of the monastery, he had woken up. So the next day, he told Padre Pio about the story, and Padre Pio answered, Well, what do you think? You were sleeping all the way, and my guardian angel was driving for you. Our next little story, Padre Alessio said, Padre Pio communicated not only with his guardian angel, but also with the guardian angel of others, of other people, of his spiritual children. And here are some examples to illustrate this. Once, someone interrupted Padre Pio in prayer, and Padre Pio said to him, Don't you see I'm very busy? Don't you see all these guardian angels coming and going backwards and forwards from my spiritual children, bringing messages from them? And obviously he was giving messages back to the guardian angels. Sometimes Padre Pio was overheard in his prayers. Things like, tell her I will pray for her. Or tell him I will knock on the heart of Jesus for his disgrace. Another time in the monastery, people heard voices of singing, incredible singing in pure harmony. And they were so astounded they looked around, but they could not find where the singing was coming from. They could not find the source of the singing. So one of the friars went and asked Padre Pio where it was coming from, and Padre Pio said, Why are you so surprised? They are the voices of the angels who are taking souls from purgatory to paradise. As we know, Padre Pio was reluctant to speak to people about this spiritual phenomenon. But he did correspond with his spiritual directors, and in which he described in some of these stories that he was in almost continual contact with his guardian angel. And his guardian angel protected him from both human and supernatural enemies, but also did other tasks for Padre Pio, like translating letters. That's quite useful that a letter comes in a foreign language, and the guardian angel would help him to understand the letter. If we can just recap what Padre Pio said about the guardian angels, we should have great devotion to our guardian angels. How consoling to know that nearest to us is a spirit who, from cradle to grave, does not leave us even for an instant. This heavenly spirit guides and protects us as a friend and as a brother.